r slash writers of horror posted by you slash carl 1961 mommy's little girl mommy's little girl has a new friend a pretty blonde girl just like mommy's little girl herself mommy's little girl's new friend doesn't know she's mommy's little girl's new friend yet but she will soon mommy's little girl's new friend lives in the house down the street mommy's little girl saw her for the first time last month when she was carrying bags of groceries into her house Mommy's little girl knew right away that they were going to be best friends and play lots of fun games together. Then Mommy's little girl saw the boy who came out of the house to help Mommy's little girl's new friend with the groceries she was holding. Mommy's little girl saw the boy and her new friend laughing together and then the boy kissed Mommy's little girl's new friend. Mommy's little girl got very angry at the boy. If the boy is Mommy's little girl's friend's friend, then Mommy's little girl won't be able to be her friend and they won't be able to play fun games together. Mommy's little girl doesn't like her new friend's friend. A few days later, Mommy's little girl saw her new friend jogging down the sidewalk in shorts and a tight t-shirt. Mommy's little girl saw just how pretty her new friend is. The nasty thing in Mommy's little girl's pants started getting tingly. Mommy's little girl remembers that she shouldn't be getting tingly about other girls because good girls don't have nasty thoughts about other little girls and they don't touch their nasty things. Mommy's little girl remembers how Mommy used to get angry at her when Mommy's little girl was growing up. Once mommy's little girl's mommy caught mommy's little girl touching her nasty thing and she got mad and punished mommy's little girl with a lighter so mommy's little girl wouldn't do nasty things ever again. Mommy's little girl's mommy was very protective of her growing up, but also very strict. Once mommy had a real little girl of her own, but she died when mommy's little girl was seven. Mommy had left mommy's little girl to watch her real little girl while mommy went to work at the men's club where she danced, but mommy's little girl was watching the Simpsons and wasn't paying attention and mommy's real little girl managed to get the back door open and wandered outside and was hit by a car. Mommy was really upset and angry when she found out. She beat mommy's little girl and said it was her fault. She said she never wanted a son and that mommy's little girl had been an accident and a bastard like her daddy. She said mommy's little girl was going to have to take her real little girl's place. She started dressing mommy's little girl in her real little girl's clothes and made her wear a wig and forced her to tuck her nasty thing between her legs so she'd look like a real little girl. When mommy's little girl got older she started growing hair on her face and body. Mommy made her shave it every single day because good little girls don't have bad hair where girls shouldn't have hair. She also started making mommy's little girl wear makeup. When mommy's little girl was 13, she started having weird feelings in her body. Her voice got deeper and two more nasty things formed between her legs, underneath the other nasty thing mommy made her hide behind her legs. Mommy made her hide the new nasty things behind her legs, too. She made mommy's little girl talk in a softer, higher voice so she sounded like a real little girl. She also made mommy's little girl wear a bra stuffed with tissue paper so she looked even more like a real little girl. Then when mommy's little girl was 18, a new family moved into the house next door. The family had a real little girl of their very own who was around the same age as mommy's little girl. She was a very pretty real little girl. The new real little girl's bedroom was directly across from mommy's little girl's room, and one night mommy's little girl saw the real little girl undressing as she got ready for bed. Mommy's little girl saw the real little girl's body. She had real girl things on her chest and didn't need to stuff her bra with tissue paper. And she didn't have a nasty thing she had to hide behind her legs. Mommy's little girl started feeling tingly again, but she remembered the lighter and knew good girls didn't touch their nasty things or have bad thoughts about other little girls. But she couldn't help it. She liked looking at the real little girl's body and liked having nasty thoughts about it. From then on, mommy's little girl watched the real little girl in her bedroom window whenever she could. One night, the real little girl's parents went out of their house and left her all alone. A little while later, a car parked outside the house and a boy knocked on the door. The real little girl let him in. Mommy's little girl watched from her window as they entered the real little girl's bedroom, both of them laughing, and started kissing. Then they took their clothes off and started doing nasty things on the real little girl's bed. Mommy's little girl watched as the boy put his nasty thing inside the real little girl. Mommy's little girl knew it was nasty, but she couldn't look away. It was exciting to watch them. Mommy's little girl's own nasty thing got hard and long beneath her dress and no matter how much she tried, she couldn't make it go back behind her legs. Touching it just made it feel even more tingly, and before she knew what was happening, the tingling sensation became more intense and then something happened. Stuff started coming out of the nasty thing. At first mommy's little girl thought she was wetting herself, but the stuff wasn't yellow like pee, it was white and thick and gooey. And, it, felt, so, good. It was the best feeling mommy's little girl had ever had. 
Mommy's little girl didn't understand why mommy had said it was nasty. How could something nasty feel so good? In the bedroom window next door, the boy and the real little girl had finished doing nasty things. The boy got dressed and kissed her, then left and got back in his car and drove away. The real little girl didn't put her clothes back on. Instead she left the bedroom, still naked. Mommy's little girl's nasty thing was already getting long and tingly again. Suddenly she realized she wanted to do nasty things with the real little girl just as the real little girl had with the boy. Mommy said it was nasty and good little girls didn't do nasty things, but they looked like they'd been having fun. Mommy's little girl wanted to have fun, too. Mommy's little girl knew she was forbidden from going outside the house. Mommy didn't want her to meet other people because they might see she wasn't a real little girl and wouldn't understand. She had never been to school or had any friends. All she ever had was mommy. But mommy was out dancing at the men's club tonight and wouldn't be back until after midnight. Mommy's little girl could sneak out, play fun games with the real little girl next door, and come back home and mommy would never even know. Mommy kept all the doors of the house locked when she wasn't home, but mommy's little girl knew one of the basement windows had a broken latch. Mommy's little girl opened the basement window and wiggled through it, then snuck across the lawn and over to the real little girl's house. She opened the door and went inside. Mommy's little girl could hear the shower running upstairs. She crept upstairs and followed the sound of the shower to the bathroom. She went inside and surprised the real little girl in the shower. The real little girl wasn't happy to see mommy's little girl. She screamed at her and told her to get out or she'd call the police. Mommy's little girl didn't understand why she was so upset. She thought the real little girl would be happy to play fun games with mommy's little girl, just like the games she'd played with the boy. The real little girl threw a shampoo bottle at mommy's little girl's head, knocking her wig off, then leapt out of the shower and tried to run away, but slipped and fell down. Mommy's little girl got on top of her and hiked up her skirt and tried putting her nasty thing inside the real little girl just like she'd seen the boy do. The real little girl had screamed and fought and clawed at mommy's little girl's face and mommy's little girl had wrapped her hands around the real little girl's throat and squeezed it to make her stop screaming and the real little girl had begun gasping and had eventually stopped fighting and had stopped gasping and had just lain there and hadn't moved. Mommy's little girl had finished playing fun games with her, but the real little girl had still been lying there on the bathroom floor, not moving or saying anything. Mommy's little girl had gotten scared. She knew if mommy and the real little girl's parents found out she'd be in trouble. Mommy would beat her and punish her with the lighter again for leaving the house and doing nasty things when she wasn't supposed to. Then she had an idea. If she set the house on fire and made it look like an accident and snuck back inside her house before mommy came home, no one would ever find out and she wouldn't get into trouble. She looked around the real little girl's house until she found some matches and set the living room curtains on fire and left the real little girl's house and snuck back to her own house and squeezed back through the basement window. From her bedroom window, she could see the flames spreading in the real little girl's house until soon the entire house was burning. Eventually the fire department had come and put it out but by then everything was pretty well burnt. No one ever found out she had been a naughty little girl and had broken mommy's rules and not long after the real little girl's parents had moved away. That had been 10 years ago, and it was the only time she had disobeyed mommy. She had been a good little girl ever since. Mommy had stopped dancing at the men's club 8 years ago because the manager had fired her. He had told mommy she was too old and wasn't bringing in the crowds like she had used to. Mommy had been really angry about that. Mommy's little girl had been careful to be on her best behavior around her so mommy wouldn't get mad at her, keeping her face and body shaved, keeping her makeup neat, keeping her nasty things behind her legs, keeping her wig and dress clean. Mommy had gone on something called welfare and because she didn't have to go out and dance anymore, she had spent most of her time at home on the couch watching Fox News on TV and grumbling about how the fucking Democrats were destroying the country. She had started drinking and eating a lot and had gotten really, really fat. Then, last month, mommy's little girl had gotten up one morning and found mommy sitting on the couch, cold and pale and not moving, an agonized look frozen on her face. One stiff hand was clutching her chest, the other was still clutching an open, half-eaten package of double-stuffed Oreos. Mommy's little girl had tried to wake her up, but mommy hadn't woken up. Mommy couldn't wake up. Mommy had gone to heaven. Maybe she had choked on an Oreo or something. Mommy's little girl had cried and cried for hours because mommy had been all she had in the world. Then she had gone downstairs to the basement and gotten a shovel and dug a grave and went back upstairs and had slowly dragged mommy down to the basement and put her in the grave and buried her. For a few days mommy's little girl was sad and lonely without mommy. Then she realized that now that mommy was up in heaven with her real mommy's little girl, she didn't have to be afraid of getting in trouble by leaving the house and going outside. Mommy wouldn't be able to punish her. 
She was free. She opened the front door and went outside. Mommy's little girl was amazed. It was the first time she had been outside, besides the one time she had been naughty with the real little girl next door, since she had been seven, before she had become Mommy's little girl. She had forgotten how wonderful fresh air smelled and how beautiful the big blue sky was. She wandered down the sidewalk, looking around. People stopped and gave Mommy's little girl strange looks. She remembered what Mommy had told her about how some people might see she wasn't a real little girl and wouldn't understand. She decided if she didn't want people to give her strange looks she would have to change her appearance so she didn't look like Mommy's little girl when she went outside. She went back into her house and found some old clothes in the basement that had belonged to Daddy before he had left Mommy when Mommy's little girl was three and Mommy was pregnant with her real little girl. Mommy's little girl took off her dress and her bra with the tissue paper in the cups and took off her wig and wiped off the makeup and put on Daddy's old clothes and looked at herself in the mirror. She looked weird dressed in Daddy's old clothes and not wearing her wig and makeup. She looked, like a boy. But she knew that she wouldn't look weird to everyone else when she went back outside. Because people didn't understand she was Mommy's little girl. She went back outside and walked around the neighborhood and this time people didn't give her strange looks. That was when she first saw her new friend who lives in the house down the street. She reminded mommy's little girl of the real little girl who had moved next door when mommy's little girl was 18. Mommy's little girl would go outside every day and walk by the house down the street hoping to see her new friend. Sometimes she even went outside at night and walked by the house, looking in the windows at her new friend. She can't wait to meet her and play fun games with her. But she doesn't like the boy her new friend is already friends with. He lives in the house with her new friend. If the boy is mommy's little girl's friend's friend, mommy's little girl can't be friends with her. Tonight mommy's little girl is standing outside her new friend's house. The boy is inside the house with her new friend. Mommy's little girl knows they're probably playing fun games together. But mommy's little girl has an idea. She's going to make the boy go away so he won't be her new friend's friend anymore. Then mommy's little girl can be her friend instead. She sneaks around the house to the back door and tries the knob. It is unlocked. She enters. She is in the kitchen. She rummages around in the drawers until she finds what she's looking for. Then she creeps through the house to the stairs and heads up to the second floor. She steps carefully down the hallway. She can hear grunts and moans coming from one of the bedrooms. It sounds like her new friend and her new friend's friend are in pain, except her new friend keeps saying yes, yes, like she likes what they're doing. They're playing fun games. Mommy's little girl's nasty thing is getting tingly. She sees an open door to her right. It is the bathroom. She goes in and steps into the shower, pulling the shower curtain half closed so no one will see her. Then she waits. She listens. Eventually the moans and grunts stop. After a while, she hears footsteps in the hallway, coming this way. She holds her breath. Someone enters the bathroom. She hears a tinkling sound. She peers around the edge of the shower curtain. The boy, her new friend's friend, has his back to her, naked, peeing in the toilet. He is standing and aiming his nasty thing down at the toilet bowl with his hands instead of sitting on the toilet and peeing like a good little girl like mommy taught her to. Mommy's little girl pushes back the shower curtain as quietly as she can and steps out of the shower behind him, raising the butcher knife she found in the kitchen downstairs. After her new friend's friend is gone, she's going to go into the bedroom and play fun games with her. They're going to have a wonderful time being friends.